All right, we are recording. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just want to welcome you all to our uh, 2021 uh, open house. Unfortunately, we have to do this uh, virtually, um, but that's the way of, of life nowadays. Um, but we'll get through it. Um, I know you don't, you're not necessarily here to listen uh, to me talk. You want to get uh, with the teachers and, and hear all the great things that you are, uh, your children will be doing this school year. Um, but we're going to go through a, a, a little bit of stuff uh, and then we'll get to that, that, uh, that portion of the night. So again, my name is Brian Gusman. I am the proud principal of Noilani Elementary School. Um, I'm also joined by our PTA president, uh, Danny Yafuso, who will have a small part uh, in just a little bit. And when, when that part comes, I'll, I'll reintroduce her. Um, but welcome, welcome to our, our, our virtual school at this point. Um, but I'm not the only one who wants to welcome you. We also have um, uh, a student council welcome uh, that'll happen in just a second. And again, like I had mentioned, we have our PTA meeting um, I'm going to do some nuts and bolts, um, and then at 6:35, uh, the teachers uh, have sent off their uh, virtual platform links, uh, and you can visit them. Um, you don't have to stay for both sessions; you can just stay for one or the other. We do a couple different uh, sessions just in case uh, families have multiple children. Um, so that's kind of the uh, the agenda for tonight. Um, so let's get started. Colton Christensen, and I'm this year's student council president. I want to welcome everyone back to a brand new school year and say a special welcome to all the new students and families to our Noah Lani Ohana. We have five other officers working to make this school year a great one. The other officers are Vice President Amy Higa, Historian Noah Edamora, Corresponding Secretary Nika Oishi, Recording Secretary Dylan Bulo and Sergeant at Arms Sarah Nakasone. Last year was new for all of us and we were able to work together to get out. Let's remember to show kindness to each other and be respectful, responsible, and safe. Let's make this school year the best one yet. All right, thank you, Colton. Okay, let's see. Hi, what? my name is. One more time. Hold on, Colton. Okay, next up we have uh, our annual PTA meeting, uh, and that's going to be um, conducted by uh, PTA President Danny Yafuso, and we'll start with her video. In just one second. Hold on. Am I still sharing, Danny? There you go. Share. Yes, cool. I think you are. Thank you, Brian. Okay, there we go. Oh, there you go. Okay. Far above the heavenly mist on the mountainside of beautiful Manoa Valley, you will find our beloved Noilani Elementary School. Since 1962, Noilani has been home to roughly 400 students each year, providing excellent education opportunities for Keiki in kindergarten through the fifth grade. The warm staff, strong academic programs, and innovative facilities encourage student growth and exploration throughout their elementary school careers. Noilani Elementary is committed to nurturing global citizens through its caring community and support for each other across all aspects of the school. The strength of Noilani lies with our PTA. So the PTA is a nonprofit organization that is part of the Hawaii State Group and as well as the national program. We are really here to advocate for our families and especially our children by collaborating with the school administration, faculty and staff. As a strong PTA organization, we're also here to give back to our families and especially our members. We host school-wide events throughout the year, trunk or treat, movie night, and those are opportunities for us to meet again and create even stronger networks amongst ourselves. So really what the PTA is looking for today is your participation and support. We really are looking for new members to come on board and join our group. Members that are returning to our beautiful campus, we welcome you back and ask you to renew your membership today. 
We appreciate anything you can do to give back to the PTA, whether it's time, volunteer service, financial donations, professional development and experience, but most importantly, your energy and enthusiasm. Votes will be conducted on the most important education program and financial matters where the PTA is involved. We will make voting easy and highly accessible through Google Forms for the best representation in our decision making for the community at large. We really want to welcome you to Noi Lani Elementary School. I can't tell you how wonderful of a career my kids have had. We're going into our eighth year as a family, and it's just such a wonderful group of people. You know, I've probably made the best friends by joining the PTA and volunteering my time, networking with other families. I really enjoy these experiences and really the historical strength of the PTA at this program is unparalleled. We have strong financial standings and we can really help the school improve and do things that they couldn't do otherwise. The school has so many great things to offer in terms of extracurricular that other schools don't have the benefit of. And a lot of it has to do with the partnership with the PTA. Our strong volunteer history has created an amazing network of families that allow the Noilani PTA to be able to provide personnel, special equipment and support to various capital projects around campus that enhance our children's learning experiences. In addition, we have been able to provide financial support for unique and special school programs, such as physical education, the impressive fourth grade trip to the Hawaii Island, and the first international sister school program in Sakai Machi in Japan. I really believe that a child's education can't thrive without community. Not only the investment of the families to want to do the best for their children, but also to collaborate with the school, the administration, the staff to know what's going on, have those conversations with your teachers. The PTA is definitely the connector that makes those things possible. We welcome one event, time at five events. There's no one way to do this. You know, if you want to chair a committee, but you can't participate during the day, you can be as involved as you would like. I think the beauty of the PTA is that there's something for everyone, and we welcome all of you to join us. So welcome everyone. Um, thank you, Principal Gusman. I really appreciate um, the time uh, today to talk about the PTA. Um, my name is Danny Afuso. I am a fifth grade parent. I do have one child who graduated a couple years ago. Um, you know, I think that a lot of us, as you can see in the video, we're really dedicated to making this uh, an outstanding year. So, first of all, shout out to the team that really put that together, Megan and Eric Johnson. You guys are phenomenal. Um, and Stanford, you know, your footage is great. Kristen, really appreciate all of your feedback. So thank you very much. I hope everyone um, got a lot out of that. You know, this is really going to be a different year for us in the PTA. We're really trying to recreate and re-engage with our membership and show everyone very clearly what we're here for and how we can help strengthen the, the community. Um, you know, our executive team, we have a lot of new families. We have a lot of returning families and a lot of uh, soon to be graduates. And so we're really looking to bring on new members this year. Um, and in any way you can, you know, there's no one way to PTA. So I definitely appreciate your support. Um, next slide, please. You know, we have four goals. And again, like I said, this year, we're going to do things a little differently. We're not going to go over some of the detailed stuff that we do, you know, um, in every open house, but we really want to highlight some goals that we have uh, as a group. For the year, and the 1st 1 is really to strengthen, you know, our relationship with the school overall uh, communication has become extremely important. I think we can all appreciate that, especially in the age of. COVID and a lot of uh, virtual meetings, et cetera, you know, losing that connection uh, has been very challenging for a lot of us and our families. So we're looking to reestablish that uh, with the school um, communication will help make us stronger. You know, the second goal we have is to sort of reimagine our committees and our key initiatives. You know, we have things coming online, like a finance committee. Um, we want to do a room parent liaison. Steph below has stepped up to do those kinds of things. We do have more of a organized social media campaign. 
Um, you know, the video that you just saw, we're going to post it to our website. Lisa Imai has done an amazing job to reimagine that space as well and, and sort of get us to these bigger strategy pieces. Um, you know, still focus on the solutions and then the everyday details, but really looking at strategy. Uh, goal number three is to, as I alluded, establishing clear financial governance and goals. You know, we know that the PTA has strength in its financial standing. But I think what happens is, and what people have given us feedback on, is we're not really sure what happens to that finance and where does it go, how are our decisions made, and just trying to be more open and transparent about that is a big goal of this year. And the fourth goal, uh, finally, and not of least, which is most important, is to increase our membership and participation. You know, the numbers are really great, but participation is super important. Um, you know, hearing your voice, hearing uh, what is important to you, um, and using that information to really strengthen ourselves is a key initiative for us. Next slide, please. So just a snapshot of where we are today, you know, we have roughly 140 individual members, which is great out of a, I think a student body count of roughly a little over 400 students. So that is a good number, but we are looking to increase that. Our financial standings remain strong at $233,000 in the bank as of today. You know, we do have an ambitious budget for the year, um, and we are looking for people to, you know, come on board, give us feedback, look at where we're spending, look at how we're going to increase our income for this year, especially without some of the large uh, fundraising drives that we normally have. Um, but we really are trying to figure out what to do with that bank account, uh, what is the best way to use the money to, for the student community and the school. Um, and some upcoming event highlights, you know, August, this has been so great. The first few days, I uh, can't tell you how nice it's been to say hi to people, whether it's on campus or just driving by through the drop-off, you know, at Boy Scout sign up. We do have a next PTA meeting um, on Thursday, August 12th. Coming up in September, we have Give Aloha, which is our big membership drive campaign. And I think a lot of that stems from Fulan being able to match a good portion of the money that we take in. So this is a time when a lot of people really want to make uh, the most of their donations. Uh, we do have a room parent orientation on September 2nd. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we have a liaison coming on board. And we're really going to try to do better communication, stronger communication through this gra grassroots effort. October, we're looking to launch our first talk story for members of the PTA. And whether it's technology based or, you know, things that kind of worry you through COVID or whatever the membership really wants, this is our time to give something back to the community um, and something that is of relevance and, and can help us and, uh, and the school as well. And then November, you know, we do, we are looking forward to our craft fair. Uh, it will be virtual. Um, but however, we reimagine that again this year, just as last year, we look to do the best possible job we can do uh, for our community and for our school. Next slide, please. So as every year comes around, we do like to thank our staff at Noi Lani. And we while we can't hand out our um our gifts this year, you know, just to let everybody know that uh we do hand out a, a small monetary gift of appreciation to our staff. And again, just to say thank you from the PTA to the school. Um, we really appreciate all you've done, all you will do this year, and, and thank you for the partnership. Next slide, please. So, you know, we're, we, like I told Brian, we're going to keep it nice and short this year. Um, we do want you to join. We really welcome everyone's voice. You know, here's some information, and because this is being recorded, we thought this was a good time to, you know, re, uh, resend our email, our website, and that we do have our next formal PTA meeting on Thursday, August 12th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Principal Gusman will be able to send out the link for those of you who are interested. Um, just wanted to say again on behalf of everybody that's worked so hard this summer to prepare a great agenda for you this year. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We hope you will join us and have a great and wonderful school year. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dan. Penny. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we typically do at our uh, open house uh, is introduce our staff. And the reason we do that, one, is so you're familiar with uh, the adults who are on campus. Uh, but really for me uh, personally, 
Um, this is my opportunity to um, show our team who really makes me look great. Um, I can't do it without them. Um, they really do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, and so we work together um, for the benefit of your children. Um, and so I want to introduce um, these people to you. So let's start with our kindergarten uh, team with um, Mrs. Chang, uh, Mrs. Giesman, Mrs. Kuba, and Mrs. Neely. They have been uh, really awesome in establishing uh, the foundation for which uh, all of our success is predicated on um, in a strong kindergarten program. And they've been there uh, as a team for a number of years. Uh, in first grade, we do have uh, a new teacher this year joining us, uh, and that's uh, Mrs. Matsui. Um, and we have returning uh, Imamura and Ms. Nakamura. Uh, in second grade, uh, Mr. Kiyokane and uh, Ms. Yoshimoto have returned. Um, and we also have uh, Ms. Dean joining us. Um, and she comes uh, with a lot of uh, great credentials and I'm excited to see um, her working with our students. Uh, in third grade, uh, Ms. Lagat has left us and we, we are fortunate to have uh, Ms. Nakashima joining our very veteran team of Mr. Nakayama and Ms. Kuroda. Uh, in fourth grade, another veteran team, uh, Ms. Gonzalez uh, has rejoined fourth grade along with Mr. Mr. Fukushima uh, and Mrs. Ho. Uh, Mr. Sakamoto's changed from fourth grade up to fifth grade um, to join Mr. Higa uh, and Ms. Shigaki. Our Kokua staff, we have uh, Ms. Nacion, Ms. Crawford, and Ms. McCurdy. Awesome group right here, very strong. Our resource teachers, uh, Ms. Murakami, Ms. Graham, Mr. Lam, and Ms. Chang, um, all play a critical role behind the scenes to, uh, to fill those gaps for a lot of our kids. As do our other support staff, our counselor, Ms. I. Uh, who you see probably every morning and every afternoon in the pickup line, uh, as well as uh, Mrs. Okuda, our school services coordinator. We also have a partnership with the UH um, MCC, the preschool. And so um, we welcome to our team, and uh, they've been here for a really long time, uh, Ms. Avis and Ms. Shelley. Uh, Mrs. Lum, our longtime PE teacher and also uh, part-time A-plus uh, co-director uh, returns. Um, unfortunately, um, Makua Alana uh, has departed, but we welcome Makua Tabehi Tafiti as our new Hawaiiana teacher. In our office, our Sasa is uh, Mrs. Ishii, um, and we welcome uh, Ms. Mitake uh, as our clerk. Our custodial staff who works super hard to make this place look great uh, is Mr. Anthony, Ms. Mary, uh, Mr. Richard, and Mr. Quinn. Um, make sure you uh, show your appreciation to these guys because they don't really like the spotlight, but they do such an awesome job of, of keeping this campus together. In our cafeteria, um, Michael Kwok um, has been here as our cook for years, as has been our cafeteria manager, uh, Barbara Joy and our baker, uh, Harris Nagasawa. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over some nuts and bolts, some things that, um, you know, we just kind of touch on some things and then I'm gonna get you guys going with uh, the teachers. Uh, we might have, um, we might be a little early on this, but um, we'll just go for it and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so, I'm not going to necessarily review a lot of the health and safety uh, information. I did that at the town hall. You can find that video and our handbook on our website. Um, and you can watch that video and, and look at our handbook um, really for more information. But, you know, health and safety is super important to us. It's front of mind for everyone. Um, you know, as the kids are coming back, um, it's going to take some time for everyone to get back into the flow of things and to get used to the routines, uh, especially those who have been on distance learning for a really long time. Um, but we'll get there. Um, I'm confident in that. Um, but the main thing is, if you can help us out at home to remind your, your children 
uh, that they need to uh, follow our procedures um, just for the, the um, safety of everyone uh, on campus. I did have an update that I sent out via email, so I just wanted to include that uh, in this presentation. Um, and that update uh, is in regards to travel. Um, so if students travel, because our students are not vaccinated, um, they are, they must follow all the applicable state and county rules at the time of their trip, uh, including if they have to quarantine, there is nothing that I can do to get them out of quarantine. Um, but there are three options if you take a trip out of state uh, and return to school. First is to be fully vaccinated. So hopefully that's gonna happen uh, for our kids uh, relatively soon. Um, but if not, then you will have to do the safe travels um, test to uh, avoid quarantine. And in addition, uh, you're going to have to take another COVID test upon arriving in Hawaii uh, and submit that to us uh, with a negative result to be able to return uh, to school. So please uh, plan ahead uh, in knowing that. And then the last option would be um, if you have to quarantine for 10 days, um, that's not really the best option for us at school, but if you have to do it, then that's what you do. Um, if you have any questions at any time, you're planning some travel, um, these travel uh, things do kind of evolve over time. And so um, if you have any questions, if you're planning travel during fall or possibly even during winter break, uh, please just call the school and then we can uh, review all the things that you need to do uh, in order to return to school. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you have have uh, recognized by now that the campus opens at 7.15 a.m. We don't want people hanging out uh, prior to 7.15. Um, if you do arrive here before 7.15, we're asking that you stay in your cars uh, in the parent parking lot behind the office until it's time. Uh, you'll know when the campus is open, when the doors to the cafeteria uh, open. So if, you, if the doors are closed, then you'll have to go and park in the back if the doors are open, uh, then the campus is open. Um, we have had uh, a lot of people uh, taking advantage of the free meals, especially breakfast. Um, so it has been a little crowded. I just wanna give everyone the heads up at this point uh, that we're going to monitor that. Um, and if there are there end up being too many people in the morning, uh, we may have to put in some uh, restrictions as to who can be uh, on campus at certain times, just so we don't have too many people in the cafeteria uh, eating breakfast at the same time. But as of right now, uh, we're okay. Uh, but just keep that in mind. So if you don't necessarily need to come at 7.15, please, by all means, come a little bit closer to the time that you have to go to class. So for example, if you have a kindergartner, uh, you can line up in front of class at 7.30. However, class does not start until 7.45. So you don't have to be here at 7.15. You could be here at 7.30, get your breakfast, sit down. Um, it doesn't take a lot of kids that long to eat breakfast um, and head down just before 7.45 uh, to class because it's not that far. Um, I do understand that people do have to get to work and there's travel time involved, uh, but as much as possible, if you can delay coming to school as close to the time it is to go to class, uh, we would appreciate it. Um, on the flip side, we do have that staggered end to our day. Um, and as many of you have noticed, um, the teachers do walk the, the students down. Um, and I think everybody's done a pretty good job of, um, recognizing if they are um, being picked up or if they're an A plus or Japanese school or Manoa Valley Church or whatever it is. Um, if you are delayed for any reason, there's traffic. I know there was like a big accident in the zipper lane this morning. Uh, please call the office so we don't have any children just um, standing there and we're wondering where the heck you are. Um, so everyone should be picking up their children in a timely manner. Um, otherwise, um, please give us a call and let us know if you're running just a few minutes late. Totally understand sometimes at work, that's what, that's what happens. And then um, excellent job everyone in recognizing uh, that yesterday was our Wednesday schedule. 
Um, so Wednesdays, again, we finish early, 1.15, 1.30, uh, and 1.45. Okay, so before school, to get back to that, just so everyone knows, there is no uh, official adult supervision before school. We do have Uncle Carl, who is our uh, breakfast uh, cashier, who kind of watches over um, the cafeteria, and he'll let kids know when it's time to go to class. Um, but we really don't have any other uh, supervision other than myself when I walk around in the morning and Miss I and some of our other uh, teachers. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, in addition, students are not allowed to play on the school grounds or on the play equipment, even if you're there. Um, the thing we like to say, if you start to go and play, then you have adopted 20 more kids who are gonna go and play as well. So we ask that you refrain from going on the playground uh, before school. So again, if you come early, uh, you can wait in the cafeteria. Uh, depending on what time you come, um, some students can start to line up in the breezeways, uh, but not in front of their classes until the designated uh, time. And just as a, a reminder, once a, a child is dropped off at school, they're not allowed uh, to leave campus uh, without permission. Okay, after school, so we run uh, our own A plus program. Uh, so that goes from after school, doesn't matter if it's uh, a regular day or a Wednesday early day, A plus will uh, pick up the students uh, and that runs until 5.30 p.m. You have to pick up your children by 5.30. Um, if you have uh, free or reduced meals, uh, you can qualify for a lower cost. And I understand some people might be like, well, we get free meals this year. Why would I apply for free or reduced meals? Well, the free reduced meal application is tied to a number of different things, not just meals. Uh, so A plus is one. Uh, another would be the bus pass. Uh, and there are several other things that you qualify for. So if you um, have had that in the past, you'll want to do an application this year uh, to to uh, continue your benefits, okay? A plus is $100, $120 per month. There is a box uh, in the office in which you can drop off your checks or cash, uh, or you can give it directly to uh, Mr. Fukushima or Ms. Lum or one of the uh, uh, leaders who are there when you do a pickup. Uh, if you have any questions at any time, their email address is a plus at nes.k12.hi.us. If you forget, it's on our website. Uh, you can look for after school programs and all the information uh, is there. We do have other providers that do pick up on campus. That would be the Manoa Japanese School and Manoa Valley Church. Uh, we have no um, involvement with them uh, other than to allow them to pick up students on our campus. So if you have questions regarding either of those organizations, you will need to contact them uh, directly. And then again, just as a reminder, if, if students are not enrolled in A plus or one of these after school programs, uh, parents should pick up the child uh, within a reasonable time uh, after school. Okay, once again, playgrounds are off limits before and after school. Uh, just wanted to emphasize that. Okay, parking. Parking has always been one of those things that uh, in the rush of the morning, uh, sometimes um, we need to be cognizant of, of dropping off our children. Um, so just so everyone's on the same page, the main parking lot in front of the cafeteria is reserved for staff. Um, so parents should not be parking there uh, for a couple of different reasons. One, we need the parking for our staff. The other is, it's very dangerous for children, even with you, to be crossing over when traffic is flowing out of our parking lot. And so we don't want you to park there and walk across. I've seen too many near misses. Um, and so please, I implore you to park in the auxiliary lot, the, the parent guest parking in the back, um, and then uh, walk your child um, safely across uh, and then onto the sidewalk. Uh, please observe the direction of the painted arrows and keep the traffic flow moving. Um, it's not such a problem as it has been in the past with our staggered um, start 
and, and end of the day. Um, but if your child does not show up to the curb in time, uh, we ask that you keep circling around uh, until your child shows up just so we don't cause traffic uh, in the drop off lane. You also shouldn't be parking in the drop off lane um, and getting out and and doing a bunch of stuff. There was one year where uh, someone actually parked their car and left uh, their keys in there and disappeared. And I had to move their car uh, out of the way. Um, and it was kind of strange, but um, we don't want people to leave their their car at all if you are in the pickup or drop off lane. Uh, and then make sure that your child is exiting on the curb side um, of the car. We don't want children to be exiting on the, the side where there's traffic, yeah, just for everyone's safety. Um, I also understand, um, you know, when you're in a rush, um, sometimes it looks attractive to park in front of our dumpsters um, near the cafeteria. Um, please don't do that. Um, it just causes a lot more traffic for everyone else. In addition, one of the things I didn't put on here is if you can watch your speed also. I, I think sometimes when people are dropping off and they're rushing to get to work, um, you're going a little bit faster than you think you are, um, especially in our parking lot. Um, and then the last thing would be when you're exiting and turning left out of our parking lot, please uh, watch out for that city and county sign that they put up. That is not our sign. That's the city and county sign. I've seen too many people hit that sign and damage their car. So please allow for a lot of time so you can pull out uh, and avoid that sign. Okay, parent communication. Um, our website always has a lot of great information. You know, I send out emails. Um, but on our school website, we have the, the uh, breakfast and lunch menu. Um, we're gonna restart doing the monthly parent bulletins uh, this month. So we'll send that out and put that on the, uh, on the website. Uh, we have a bunch of school generated forms, so you don't have to go searching all over the place. Um, and when we're able to restart our online uh, programs and resources or our in person programs and resources, all the information will be there. Um, and the main thing is um, the school calendar is also um, on the website. So if you are looking for when, say, picture taking is, uh, you can find that there and uh, time out your child's haircut uh, so it doesn't look. Uh, terrible when they have to take pictures. Um, as I said, I I send out a lot of emails. Hopefully, you've been getting them. I tried to do a couple of text messages just to kind of test it out. Um, I can do phone calls also and leave messages. Uh, but in any event, make sure that all of your information is up to date. It pulls it from our system. Um, if you have not been getting um, my emails or you did not get a text message from us. Um, it's important that you come in uh, and check. Um, sometimes uh, letters will get transposed when um, typing in your uh, email address or your phone number. Um, and so um, you're not actually getting it. Um, if you're getting it secondhand from someone else, uh, that would be a good sign for you to come in and, and check um, whether or not the information that you have online is correct. Okay, um, so that ends the, uh, the my portion uh, of the uh, open house. Uh, we are a little bit early. It is about 6.20. Um, so what we'll do is the virtual, first virtual classroom visit starts at 6.35. Um, so we're gonna log off uh, from this meeting and then you should have the link to go to uh, the teachers meetings uh, and they will get started at 635. If you have to visit two different classrooms because you have multiple children, then that second virtual class visit will start at 705. Um, on behalf of the faculty and staff of Noilani Elementary, I want to welcome you to this school year. It will be uh, a challenge once again, uh, but I'm confident that we will work together and overcome the challenges as we've done for the last year and a half. Um, I also like to thank Danny Yafuso, uh, PTA president, and all the people involved uh, with the PTA for supporting the school um, and allowing us to do a lot of the things that make Noilani a very special place um, and really give your children the opportunities that, um, you know, they're not everywhere. Um, 
And that's the thing that I really love about, one of the things really that I love uh, about Noilani um, is your involvement. Um, so I encourage you, as Danny said, to be involved with the PTA um, because it, uh, it really is uh, a great organization and they do a lot for the school. So let's see here. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to log off at this point. Um, I bid you farewell um, and uh, I hope you uh, have a great rest of your night uh, meeting with the teachers. Thank you very much.